David Vizard here and you are watching Powertech 10. In this episode we're going to look at fuels. I'm sure many of you have seen tests of race gas versus pump gas in uh, regular street motors and the truth of the matter is at lower compression ratios the race gas often makes less horsepower than the pump gas. Now why is this? Mostly it's because the tune of the engine hasn't been altered to suit the race gas. It's just been an A to B test and that's it. A point on leaded gas. Leaded gas, that's the high octane stuff that the uh, race gas manufacturers produce, um, has a longer delay time at the point of the spark going off. Consequently, very many of the tests done on race gas are done with the ignition timing not quite at the right point for the race gas. But even so, that high octane race gas sometimes, even when it's optimized timing wise, still doesn't make the horsepower that pump gas will make. And I'm talking about compression ratios now, maybe up to about 11 to one. However, let's look at another aspect here. You can get fuels that are oxygenated. Now, an alcohol is an oxygenated fuel. Methanol has a certain amount of oxygen in it. But VP race gas has a fuel blend that contains way more oxygen, uh, has way more oxygen content than we'll say methanol or ethanol. The consequence is it should make more power. Now, VP claims some pretty big claims on here. Is it bluff or are they really buff fuels? Do they have the strength to make more power? Let's talk about the test engine. This was a 496 big block Chevy that I built, oh, some years ago now. I think I originally built it to test some AFR 325cc big block heads. I ran these out of the box, they worked very well. And then after that, I ran them just cleaned up. Nothing special, just a 60 grit emery job through to just clean up the uh, uh, joints between the machining in the throat and the short side turn and a bit of work around the side. You could say it was pocket porting. Right, and that was about it. The heads worked very well. In fact, I did a bunch of head testing at that time and the AFR 325 head came out on top. Uh, I think I tested Dark, Elbrock, Bill Mitchell's heads, that's uh, World heads, and uh, a few others. And the top runners were AFR and Dart. They were pretty close. Let's go on and look at the engine. It was a 10.5 to one and it was run on pump gas. We did check it on race gas and it dropped power. And that's with optimizing jetting and everything, it dropped power. Now, the next thing we decided to do, well, let me go, let me deal more with the spec before I go into anything else. It was a um, hydraulic roller cam. That was a comp cams grind done to one of my, done to one of my specs, uh, made very good power band. I mean, it pulled all the way down to as low as the dyno would pull it made lots of torque. Now, here's how you tell whether an engine's good on torque or not. If it's got a compression ratio around 10, 10.5 to one, then it should make between about 1.38 to 1.4 foot pounds per cube. If it does not, it indicates it was a bad build, i.e. too much friction, or a bad camshaft, right? I say bad, spec incorrectly and the normal thing is with a big block is to spec the cam on far too wide a low center line angle you need to look at some of my cam videos and you'll get an idea why the low center line angle is the most important thing there is ignore what everybody else says there is as far as i know there's nobody on the face of the planet who's done more camshaft testing than me so I'm having people of less experience contradict me. That's not such a good idea. 
Anyway, the point is this. The engine made high 700s on horsepower and high 600s on torque, which was very good. And it was totally street drivable on pump gas. So here we go on that test. This I ran at Terry Walters. My late daughter and I went up there with the engine and we fooled around with it for a couple of days up on Terry's dyno. side by side you can see now let me have a look at my pad here you can see we've upped the torque by 13 foot pounds with the uh, BP uh, oxygenated fuel and we've upped the horsepower by 27 quite a useful increase just for a change in fuel and a change in jets we were optimally jetted for the regular uh, unoxygenated pump gas 91 octane fuel but oxygenated fuel takes different jetting now why does it do so well at a risk of showing off my kids i'm terrible at that let me use the explanation that my daughter used when somebody came in to the dyno shop and found that we changed the jetting and said it's not a true back-to-back -back test and and my daughter said yes it is and he said to her why did you change the jets then and i'm going to quote as near as i can the oxygenated fuel makes the cylinders of the engine at the time of induction and combustion think that there's more air coming in but because the, this in quotes extra air is coming in via the fuel the jets are now delivering what amounts to oxygen plus fuel that means there's less room for fuel so the amount of pure fuel that comes through the jets has gone down on the other hand because that cylinder has now got oxygenated fuel it thinks that the air has gone up so the mixture goes immediately lean. So you have to put in bigger jets. And I remember Terry turned to me and he said, I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, that's the reason we put in the bigger jets. Right. So let's wind this up here. Basically, it's probably quicker to make a swap at the drag strip to oxygenated fuel by just upping the jets and running it on on VP's oxygenated fuel than it is to to than it is to change to ethanol but if you're going to do some other changes to the engine as well then the ethanol would be a better bet and I'm going to do a video on that how the ethanol group of people have not spent enough time telling hot rodders how to use it properly. 
I'm going to fix that. Thank you for watching.